So before we talk in more detail about autonomy, I want to show you guys uh, a really great example of uh, autonomy. Um, it's from the movie Dune, uh, which um, I'm sure many of you saw. Uh, great movie. I really enjoyed it. Um, there's one scene. So this scene that I'll put up right now where they're about to go to, um, I think, planet Arrakis, where the, the spice is. And <clears throat> the son, the prince, is trying to figure out what he's doing. He's not really sure. He has a conversation with his dad, and this is what his dad says. He says, <clears throat> our grandfather said a great man doesn't seek to lead. He's called to lead, and he answers. This is the part I really like. And if your answer is no, you'll still be the only thing I ever needed you to be, my son. I found my, my own way into it. Um, this, to me, is the essence of autonomy. And it, it was great because it wasn't cheesy. <laughs> It wasn't like a, some cheesy line from a family movie where the dad's like, oh, I'll love you no matter what you do. Um, you know, an epic sci-fi, just brilliant movie with some serious actors, serious dialogue, serious director, and a serious budget. And right smack in the middle of it is this amazing example of autonomous parenting. The father... It's so momentous because it's so critical. It's so important. It's so, there's so much at stake, right? And the father takes this risk. I think it's kind of like taking a risk and says, son, it's up to you, <laughs> right? You want to take over the job of leadership, of leading uh, the good guys of the universe and become the king? take over my position, it's up to you. Um, and it's not even like, it's up to you. We'll see how you do, son. You know, there's no implicit, overt, uh, covert kind of pressure. There's no passive aggressive anything. It's just pure, honest to goodness, genuine love. And not only love, but I think the father just really sees things as they truly are. Um, I don't know what his inner motivations are, but, um, you know, it's leadership. You're called to it. I tell you what, son, if you don't, I'll still love you. You'll still be my son. And that's all I ever needed. Uh, that's all I ever asked. Uh, or wanted from you, man, just brilliant. Um, love that quote. I want to focus on the the what he says after that as well. Um, I found my my own way into it, or I found my own way to it. And I thought about this sentence for a long time because I'm trying to figure out like what exactly did he mean by that, and. Um, it is a little bit of an odd thing to say because he did become the king. But the way he says it, you know, he doesn't say like, oh, I love, I, you know, I just, I, I always want to do. And so I just did it. And when my, when grandfather told me I had to do it, I was like, yay. That's not what he said. He says, I found my own way to it. Um, you know, that's a very kind of autonomous type of statement, right? I found my way to do it, like my own way to do it. Um, it wasn't grandfather's decision, it was my decision. At the same time, it almost sounds like he wasn't happy about it, right? It makes it seem like he was called to do it, he decided to do it, he didn't want to do it, but he found a reason to do it. He found a way for him to be happy about this situation where he was called upon to become a leader, right? Um, and this is, I don't know who wrote, I gotta find out who wrote this because this is so insightful. Let me show you, um, so this is the intrinsic, extrinsic motivation spectrum of self-determination theory. And I'm gonna go over this in a lot of detail, but if you look in the middle, the middle is the extrinsic motivation, right? So you're going from a motivation, no motivation at all, 
through extrinsic motivation all the way to intrinsic motivation, and then you're fully self-determined. I want to focus on the last stage of extrinsic motivation. Extrinsic motivation, there's four parts to it, and they get increasingly stronger in the level of motivation. The last, strongest, the most, um, the, the strongest part of extrinsic motivation is called integration. And what it is, is it's congruence, it's a synthesis of many different uh, identifications, values, purpose, mission, and it's not just one, right? It's not just one reason. It's a whole network mesh of internal, external uh, reasons that the person develops in order to take on whatever task um, that they have. And so for example, I don't enjoy math, but I'm gonna work hard at it and I'm gonna do it because becoming a vet is my mission in life. My life's mission, uh, vision is to raise awareness of animal ethics in my country. So we've got long-term vision, mid-term, short-term. All of this is uh, systematized. It's, it's, um, it's combined into a powerful mix of motivations. They still don't, they still, your student may not like math that much. So it's not intrinsic motivation. However, they have found enough external reasons that are personal to them, that are important to them, um, such that they will take on the task. They will work hard and get good at math. Um, and in the in the case of Dune, you know, um, taking on the role of this, um, the the leadership role, right?